Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. Here's your weekly technical analysis of New York and London sugar markets. I'll start with ice raw sugar in New York. Okay, headache time again. Fifth week in a row, and I again must apologize for the multitude of lines and labels that I've drawn on this daily chart. However, technically there's still a lot going on here and these labels and lines are all valid in my deciphering and trying to decipher what is happening here. Okay, so I have to go back to the declines earlier this year below the long moving average currently at 1920. They had a result of three head and shoulders patterns created between August 21 and January 22. I've already exhaustively highlighted all three of these patterns, so I'll only say they're complex versions of normal workaday patterns. However, there's one interesting point to discuss. The neckline of the October 21 to January 22 head and shoulders top, plus the middle time, well, after a fashion, that's currently at 1904, managed to stop the decline back at the end of February. The subsequent recovery back up was prompted by an immediate countering weekly key reversal up over the turn of February into March. This recovery rose up to the neckline of the older August to November 21 complex triple top, currently 2030, breaching it breaking it even if you like before the rally failed in mid-April and we've seen prices dropped after this even gapping lower until four weeks ago. Now please keep in mind that neckline of the August to November 21 complex triple top as it will pop up again later. Anyway the mess of congestion support around the middle time mainly the combination of February 21 high at 1894 the medium moving average currently 1903, the long moving average currently 1920, and the short medium moving average currently 1945. Well, they eroded the bearishness over the start of May until the middle of May, such that though prices pushed below all of them, the market did not have any further impetus to aggressively push even lower. And that's below the congestion from February this year, between approximately 1840 and 18 even. Within this congestion, notably sits the 50% absolute Fibonacci line for the 21st century, 1809. Thus, four Thursdays ago, the market made an immediate countering bullish engulfing pattern that was the start of a strong move higher, which only halted three weeks ago by our old friend, the neckline of the August to November 21 complex triple top, currently 2030. And that was aided and abetted by the middle time, currently 24.9 of the newly drawn start of March to mid-May bullish Andrews pitchfork. All this action also created, some may say artificially, an island bottom over the first two weeks of May. The target of such an island bottom was reached three weeks ago. Thus prices have risen up to an area of resistance that currently stretches from 2010 to 21 even. Now, this is not a new area. No, no, you can see a box to the sort of upper left of the daily chart. I wrote, well, I actually can't seem to remember when I wrote it, but it details this specific band from January to February 2017. Just on this daily chart, this area has capped the market back in October and November 21, and then again recently in April this year. In no particular order, we have resistances at 2012, 2047, 2070, 2076, and 21 even, as well as the complex neckline from August to November 21. All these have been and are rubbing compounds to erode the bullish incentive which was so brilliantly shown in early to mid-May in an area fairly empty of significant resistances or supports. Thus it was only in the last three weeks have we seen bearish pressure being applied from above. Additionally, and this is the interesting bit, by doing just that we have set up the conditions that the mid-May today action could be seen as a possible flag in a bull flag formation in the making. So far, apart from the construction, there's been no inkling of this, nor even a tiny indication that it's a pure pattern, but the setup conditions are there. Hence, as a purely speculative point, I've placed a potential target X in the 21 even area as a potential target for such a, uh, for just such a pattern or formation as I have for this possible bull flag. We shall see how this develops. Overall, the market is still in between the middle time, currently at 2049, and the lower time, currently 1897, with a relatively newly drawn December 20 to April 21 bullish shift pitchfork. 
Ice Europe, White Sugar in London. Okay, so let's cover some of the groundwork. You see, the market made a big meal from the break upwards out of the September 21 to February 22 lopsided diamond pattern back in February. The move up took its own time, but by mid April, the market reached up to the 572.20 area, the target for the mid February, mid April bullish half hesitation. Since then, we've had a changeover gap lower the market levels, and prices have pulled back to the vicinity of the congestion from early 2017 and the 517.80 area. This area is actually a complex support zone, as it also includes a neckline from the August to December 21 complex head and shoulders top, currently 524.30, as well as the important rising medium moving average, currently 526.40, and the rising long moving average, currently 514.10. This is why over late April and early May prices held over and around the 517.80 area, more or less, and under the old gap from March 2017 between 531.70 and 532.70. Four weeks ago I posed the question, what does the pit, this period of interday indecision, what does it signify? Does it signify a bottom with prices moving back up to the May 17 high resistance at 548.70 or does it signify a halfway hesitation with prices tripping down below all the moving averages, as well as the congestion area, 488.10 to 490.10? The answer came during the same week when the market made a weekly key reversal up, which included a gapping move higher. Since then, prices have stabilized over the March 2017 high at 548.70 and have been corralled, well, for the most part, on the top side by the middle time, currently 575.10 of the newly drawn February to May bullish Andrews pitchfork. Two weeks ago, the market made an unusual key reversal up on a prior bullish pattern that pushed prices up over the next resistance. That's the February 2017 high of 565, thus filling in the changeover gap between 554 even to 572 and a half. Last week, with another key reversal up, this time an immediate countering key reversal up and bullish engulfing pattern, the market pushed up over the next resistance level at 575 even, as well as the middle time. Today we've had another new high pushing up over the November 16 high at 589.90 and into a congestion zone dating from late 2016 between 587.10 and 608.30. Um, actually the 608.30 is the October 2016 high. So far, the market has made some good progress within this congestion zone, but it will be the closes that will matter when we come to see how good a movie has been, and we've only just started that journey. There is one more thing to bear in mind. I said last week, and I quote, if prices push up over 577.60 between now and Tuesday night, that's last Tuesday night, which is possible, and then close on Tuesday night over 541.50, which would, would be doable, then we would have a very large monthly key reversal up for May, end of quote. Well, the market did just that, and we have ended up with a monthly key reversal up here for May. I'll leave that hanging in the air for a moment, and all the implications that brings. Sugar White Premium Spread. The market has finally made sense of the false break higher, then lower, then back up higher, more recently from the ascending wedge pattern formed between July 21 and the middle stroke late part of May. It is, was a reasonably good looking pattern. I would not normally expect problems from such an action. However, problems are what started to happen when prices reached the final part of the pattern. And it's only the weekly key reversal up made four weeks ago that finally decided the matter. There are two further patterns, one of which I'd previously drawn your attention to, which I would still like to discuss. The first one is the quiet and subtle bullish bow tie, tie formation formed over Christmas last year. Made up from the short moving average, currently 150 even, short medium moving average, currently 123 and a half, and the long moving average, currently 86 and a quarter. What had been interesting back at the time of its formation was how all the moving averages went in and out of the bow tie in the right order. A rare feat in some of the markets. Theoretically, the market should move in the direction of the outgoing moving averages, in this case higher, which we already seen happen. However, the key move should happen between 15 to 20 trading sessions after the crossover. In this case, it will be between the weeks of the 4th uh, of April and 9th of May. 
and this year. Or in other words, four weeks ago, which is when we saw the previously mentioned weekly key reversal up after three weeks of indecisive patterns. The second key discussion point I've already spoken about over the last two weeks. I'd previously spoken about it this way, and I quote, there is a pattern which, whilst not directly touched, may be indicative of the bullish angle of attack. It is the 2019 to 2021 bullish Andrews pitchfork. The market's currently between a middle time overhead, currently 137 even, and a lower time below, currently 62 and three quarters. End of quote. This bullish Andrews pitchfork is still operational and has previously provided with its middle time the next major obstacle not only in March and April, but also in as recently as May, as, and also as we entered June. Then last week, as we entered June, the market punched up through this middle time, halting only at the next resistance level, the 2013 high at uh, 152 and three quarters. This week, we have already moved higher up into a congestion zone, which start, starts with a gap from the July and 2012 high at 164 and three quarters to the low pre-change over in July 2011 at 167.5. We then have a congestion zone from about 164 and three quarters up to 178.5, which is the next significant obstacle overhead. With all these actions, last week I laid out some targets on the top side for this ascending wedge pattern. Thus, an initial target X was in it, wait for it, the 162 even area. This was well up and off the top of my daily chart at the time. A secondary harder to achieve target X1 would be in the 191.5 area, even higher and still unlike the earlier target, just off the top of my daily chart today. I added last week and I quote, I know that these are humongously big asks, but that is what I see. It depends on one thing and one thing only. That prices maintain contact with the middle time or break upwards clear of it. End of quote. Well, so far prices have broken up through the middle time and have seemingly consolidated at higher levels. In the process, the potential primary target X1 in the 191 and a half area, the one the high target that was too far to, to really talk about, has already been achieved. We now wait and see what the market will make of the overhead congestion zone and if the harder to get target X1 is achievable. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives essential market pattern consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyright Zeddy Topic and ADM Investor Services International Limited. Here comes the final bit. <laughs>